today we're starting a series called Christmas Chaos. Anybody relate? <laughs> Amen. Um, for some reason, somewhere around mid-November, every year things get crazy for people, right? You start worried about presents or money or finances or, or all these issues. And, and what we want you to know is that Christmas is supposed to be peaceful. And, and I can preach this from a perspective of not that I've got it all together in the area of peace. But I can preach it from the area of I spent most of my children's childhood, uh, I hated Christmas. I absolutely hated Christmas because my father passed away on December 19th. So my memories of Christmas growing up and even as an adult was there was death, there was harm, there was pain. There was, there was, something was take, being taken away from me. Uh, and there's a long story behind that. We're not going to get into it today. But, but I spent, I, you know, my wife called me a Scrooge for many, many years. And, and that was true. I didn't want to go look at lights. I didn't care about wrapping presents. I, 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 honestly, that tree, in the, I wish she just wouldn't put that tree up. You know, that kind of stuff. She even had the reindeer antlers on her car one year. And I was like, what do you do that for? Because she understood. She enjoyed. She could, ha- she could have a good time, right? Um, so for me, it was tough to make that switch. And, then, then when I, and I understand I was a Christian most of these years, too. So when I begin to really just stop and say, God, I want you to pluck these things out of me. I really, I really want to get over into a place of peace. And, and he started talking to me about what Christmas really meant. And, and it's not like I didn't know the scriptures. It's not like I hadn't preached Christmas messages. It just wasn't something that was on my radar to work on. And now, how many trees we got? Six trees. There's, no, oh, there's only three? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And they started putting them up before Thanksgiving, which is cardinal sin. I'm going to have to lead them to the Lord. But the truth is that, that, that we've gotten to the place in our house now where Dad really enjoys Christmas. And, and I'm not the shopper. I'm not the decorator. I'm not that. But I just enjoy watching my family have a good time. So in Christmas Chaos Part 1, we're starting today, we want to we just talk about peace. And a matter of fact, this whole series may be about peace. Because if there's anything most people need, it's peace, Right? We talk about prosperity in the word of faith a lot. We, we talk about prosperity and God's provision and all of that. But when you understand that real prosperity begins with peace. When you're peaceful, you can hear God on where to sow your money or where to sow your time or where to sow your effort. Because everything in finances comes with seed time and harvest. But none of that matters if you're doing it without understanding that God spoke this to me. And because God spoke this to me to do this, to give this, to say this, to preach this, to sing this, to be in this church. Whatever he's told you to do, he's bound to honor you. But he can't honor you unless you're in peace. Right? So we're going to talk about that today. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, and I am going to do my best uh, to, to try to get through this first one so we can lay a good foundation. So over the next few weeks up until Christmas, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about this series right here. Galatians 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Say, under the law. <laughs> made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Say sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, or Daddy, Daddy is what that means, or Papa, Father. I'll explain that in a minute. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, the Good News translation, the camera don't have that, but just, just, just... Listen to me as I read this to you. The Good News Translation says it this way. But when the right time finally came, God sent His own Son. And He came as a son of a human mother and lived under the Jewish law to redeem those. Now, that word Jewish law is very key. We're going to get into that in just a minute. He lived under the Jewish law to redeem those that were under the law so that, so that we might become God's children. Now, the King James says sons, and, and y'all understand my, my primary grace is sonship. We'll talk about that a little bit. But I want you to understand what we're talking about here in this Good News Translation. And my iPad just quit on me. It's brand new, too. Right, hang tight. Here we go. Thank God the message is in me, not on it, right? So, uh, verse 6, To show that you are His children, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who cries out, Father, Father, that when you are no longer a slave, say slave, but a child, and since you are His child, God will give you all that He has for His children. Now, the Bible says this. Well, let, let me start here. The Bible... 
we, we've, you hear a lot, especially these days, this, this term, the gospel of grace, right? We hear it a lot. Uh, some, of, some, of my, some of my mentors teach it all the time. Do you know, I have no problem with that saying, but do you understand there is no context for that saying in the Bible? There's no such thing as the gospel of grace. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 14, it says, uh, let's see, camera, put that up on the screen for me. Romans 10 and 14. I want to read you something. Romans 10 and 14. Get my, my eyes on here. How then men shall call on him when they have not believed, and how uh, shall they believe on him have they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? How shall they preach uh, except they be sent? How beautiful, listen, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach what? The gospel of peace. And does what? Bring glad tidings of what? Good things. See, the gospel, of, the gospel of peace encompasses grace. But grace, although grace is, is the very essence of power to overcome whatever you're struggling with, peace is the most powerful force on the planet. And you can talk about grace all day long, but if you have no peace in your heart, it has no effect because you can't have victory because you're not peaceful between you and your father. There's no peace. There's no glad tidings. There's no good things. You don't believe that good things can take place in your life because there's no peace. Sometimes we use good Christian words and good church stuff to try to get us through something. And the truth is, is all you need is peace. It doesn't mean that you have it all together. Trust me, my God in heaven. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect. It doesn't mean that, that that's, you know, you're in your house singing kumbaya all day long, sitting around the fire with your feet folded up with your hands. That's not what it means. But it means that even in the midst of absolute chaos, you get to stop and take a breath and know that he's your father, you're his son, and all is well between us. How amazing is that? See, that's what got me about Christmas. I got to the place that I didn't understand, you know, why things were, were, were going this way. And I kept trying to, Lord, I want to enjoy Christmas. I, I, want to, I want to have fun with my family. Well, fix me, God. And I'd pray in the Holy Ghost and I'd get locked off in rooms and I'd do all these different things. And, and here's what I was doing. I was trying to change me with my effort. Not saying that prayer is not important. Not saying that all the things I've talked about is not important. Not saying getting along with God is not important. But the most important thing is to understand that it is that gospel of peace that lays the foundation. That puts you in a place that you don't sit there and try to fix you yourself. Because, y'all, honestly, if you could fix you, wouldn't you have already done it? But yet we've spent all this time and effort trying to fix things. But we want to walk in glad tidings. We want to walk in good things. And, and here's the deal. What people have done, and they've not done it in a, bad, in a bad mindset. People say, well, we're not of the Old Covenant anymore. We're not, a, we're not of Old Testament. We're, that's Old Testament. We're, we're under the New Testament. Let me explain something to y'all. Just because we're under the New Covenant, and we are. We are New Covenant people. Just because we're under the New Covenant doesn't mean that the Old Covenant didn't exist. We try to say, well, we're free, bless God, but the Old Testament doesn't matter. No, it absolutely matters because every promise you have is in that covenant. Every single thing that you've been promised is in Deuteronomy. Every single thing when it comes to your body, your family, your finances, your health, your businesses, all the different things around you are in Deuteronomy. And if you just discount the Old Covenant, then you have no basis to go by. So it doesn't mean that, that the new, that, listen, Jesus didn't come to give you a new covenant to tell you that that don't matter. He came to fulfill it so that you could prove to him or he could prove to you that it has been fulfilled. It's not been finished as far as finished to end. It's been finished that you don't have to do it anymore. Let me explain something to you. Here's how it works. We put this wall up. How long ago, Brian, did we put this wall up? About six months ago? Eh, give or take. Yeah, neither one of us know, but we're nodding. <laughs> we're, we're nodding like we're on it. Six, about six months ago, we put this wall up. So when we put that last piece wherever it was, and I don't know where it was because we got lost in trying to put that puzzle together. When we put that last piece in, it was finished, right? But, but, but it was still there. It was completed, but the wall was still there. 
See, we've taken the Old Testament in this hyper-grace mindset, and we said, we're not under grace. We're under grace. We're not under the Old Covenant, so it doesn't even exist. Y'all, if, if you don't hear anything, hear this. Jesus came to show you you can't live the law. You're not perfect enough. You have to have a perfect Savior. You have to accept that He cares about you. There was never a fault with God's Word. Listen to me. To say that there is no old covenant is to say that there was a fault with what God did. That's big. There's never a fault with God's Word. There's only a fault with God's people trying to do His Word their way. Let me explain something to you. A lot of what grace people, and I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. i got friends that, that preach grace. I'm talking about hyper-grace, just like there's hyper-prosperity. When you get over into this, we can do anything we want to because we're going to heaven, you're missing some things. Now, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a hell-hot preacher, but it's going to be. The thing is, you've got to understand that there are things in that law that God didn't speak. You know what God's law is? Ten Commandments. That's God's law. All this other stuff that Moses gave us, was to make the people in the, in the wilderness act like they had some sense. This is, what, this is what people rebelled against. Well, you know, Moses gave us the law that says, you know, if my wife is not pleasing to my eye any longer, I can trade her in on a new model. Can't nobody say nothing to me. That's, that's what Moses gave them. That ain't what God gave them. It's what Moses gave them. So you had people out here. Now, that's great for the man, right? She done made you mad. Go, you gone. Next, right? They had to, I had to, they had, what was it, left swipe back then? Just keep going. <laughs> I tread lightly, she said. She got my crutch. <laughs> Y'all, listen, I apologize for limping around, and I apologize for sweating. I'm hurting so bad. But I did pretty good on drums, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm just needing you to stroke my ego a little bit. I know. I told the, I told the praise team I sound like Def Leppard's drummer upside down. <laughs> Some of you get that later. Anyway, so so the man, that's great. He could say, "You may be mad. You've aggravated me. You're foolish. You can go." He has not. He doesn't have to live by the covenant. He can get remarried. She can't. If she gets remarried, because now she can't take care of herself, she has to go build her own business. But yet she's in a, she's in a society. That's agregorious. She had to do agriculture, and she may not be physically able to do that. There's different things in her life that she can't do now. So now she's stuck in a situation where she can't take care of herself. So she comes to a situation where she meets somebody, and she wants to get married because, I, you know, I'm struggling. I'm not saying that women can't do it. I'm saying in this, this society, it was altogether almost impossible. So when she would go to get married, she would be called the adulterer, drug out, and stoned. Kind of makes sense now why Jesus walked up on this little party with his cafe latte. And, and they're out here. They've got this woman they've caught in an act of adultery and drug her out of her tent. And they're going to stone her. See, because the law reveals to you how hard your heart is. Jesus reveals to you how soft he wants your heart to be. So Jesus walks in and they said, what do you think, preacher? What do you think about this? We caught her in the very act of adultery. She might not. You know what? The very act of adultery. Not, there's some other things here I could preach on why she was there. But the reason that they said she was in the very act, not that they walked in and found her, uh, found her buck naked, stark naked with, with another man. That's not what they, what they found was she was engaged and about to be married to take care of herself. So they drug her out to stone her. And they said to Jesus, what do you say about this? Jesus is the gospel of peace. What did he say? Y'all, anybody know? He started writing on the ground. Then he says, whoever takes up the first what? Stone. Which was not to say, don't throw it. It was to remind them of how Moses gave them that law because their hearts were so stony. Because they lived their life every day rehearsing scriptures. And they know why it was done. See, we judge, we, we judge the Pharisees a lot. But how many times as Christians do we know what was said, but we do this? See, they knew why Moses gave us that law. Because it was to remind. It wasn't to say, you can get rid of your wife. That's not what the law was for. It was to say, don't be so hard. Because you ain't spring chicken yourself. That's what it was meant to say. But we being people do what? 
We take it and we go as far with it as we can. You know why people don't, don't drink? Um, they don't preach drinking in moderation. Because in, in the church, people will go, Pastor said we drink and tear one on tonight. I mean, that's just the truth. Now, you're going to say, well, Pastor, what about this? Well, I, I'm not here to tell you. My job is not to follow you home. My job is to tell you, listen to the Holy Spirit in your life. That's my job. Now, here's the deal. When you sit there and you live life worried about, am I doing the law? Am I doing right? Am I acting right? Does God... Let me tell you something. You can't act any more better to make him love you more. Now, let me clarify, because we're, we're in peace. You do have to do certain things and carry yourself in a certain way and have your heart broken in a certain way to walk in his benefits, to walk, in his, to walk into the prosperity, of what he's, to walk into the calling, to walk into the grace to do what he's called you to do. However, you don't have to do anything to make him love you. He proved that on a cross. I'm so tired of hearing stupid actors that can't act so the new Christian movies talk about America's being judged, America's being judged. The judgment was on the cross. If America's being judged, we owe Jesus an apology. Because everything you've ever done and ever will do was put on that cross. The Bible says that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all. Now go look at your Bible. I don't have that scripture reference right here. But I want you to go look that up. You will see that the word men is italicized. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Which means men was put in there by the translators. Which means Jesus actually said, if I be lifted up, I draw all unto me. Which is every sin, every hard heart, every issue, Every problem, every judgment, everything that's ever taken place on this planet crawled onto his body and he took it. And if I could ever get you just to accept that your issue died with him. And the only way it has life is you keep bringing it up as if you've got to get better. He doesn't love you because you're lovable. He loves you because he's lovely. He doesn't love you because you're perfect. He loves you because he's perfect. He doesn't love you because you can do all things right. He loves you because he sit right here and all he wants you to do is accept it and get past your silly offense. 90% of offense in people's hearts silly. They mad about something. They mad about something that don't mean nothing. And the truth is, if everybody ever got in a room and talked it all out, it wouldn't even be an issue. But childishness is the one thing that stops. The Bible says the one thing that can stop Jesus and what he did is the traditions of man. And what is the biggest tradition most people have? Oh, I ain't talking to them no more. We ain't talking about football tradition. Let's not talk about football. <laughs> After my gloat float last week, you know, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Jesus carried it to the cross. Y'all, please listen. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all. He drew homosexuality. He drew adultery. He drew murderous spirits. He drew everything to him. The Bible says, listen to me, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah that there was no beauty left in him. That wasn't because they beat him. That's because every skin disease and disorder had had crawled onto his body. He was disfigured. Not because they beat him. They did. But that's not what. It was all there. Everything that is wrong on this planet. Since Adam. Crawled onto Jesus. Into Jesus. And around Jesus. And died with him. Why do you think he had to go to hell? Because he had to take all of that there. And that's the savior. That we worship. And we're thankful. For Christmas. Because that was the very breath of peace that entered this world. Is this making sense to you? See, if I can get people peaceful. Now look, everybody looks at me, especially you folks that's been here more than, <laughs> more than a few years. Alan wasn't always peaceful, don't amen. Alan was, I used to be so uptight. Jason spilled some coffee up here on the stage this morning. We were laughing about it because five or six years ago, man, I lost my mind. You're off praise team, moron. What you got coffee up here for? It's true, y'all. People have been here a while. Tell, tell the truth. That's true. But see, something happened. A little thing called peace showed up. Now, am I peaceful all the time? No. Have I got it all together? No. Am I living perfectly? No. Am I in open sin? No. But I'm a work in progress. 
that I know peace is the most powerful force to get me there. I've understood that if I hook my wagon to peace, see, people say, well, you hooked up with Brother Copeland. You know, you, you, you're, you're, you're ordained by Brother Copeland. You're, you're in there with, with uh, Matt Gober and, and all them guys and, and Tracy Harris and Doc Barkley and all. Uh, you, you know, you preach in prosperity. The greatest prosperity I've ever had in my life is being able to lay my head down at night and not worry about nothing. Now, money's in that, thank God. But that's not what I talk about. What I talk about is when you've been able to walk out of here and win. How do you win? You win because you're, so, you're, you're the most anointed Jedi and can just move things. No, no, no. You win because you're peaceful. You win because you've got it inside of you. Now, listen. You ain't always going to have it together. Your emotions are going to flare up. Life's going to hit you square in the face. A pumpkin's going to fly at your building. You're going to almost break your ankle. It's the truth. <laughs> I mean... Pumpkins, man. Anyway, but let me explain something to you. I'm, I'm fixing to be very transparent. I haven't asked my wife about this, and I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me. I work for myself. I have my own business. I'm laying in the bed canceling work right here at Christmas time. Do I look worried? I ain't worried a bit. You know why? Because it's peace. He told me, I got you. My God, if he's got me, that's better than any of y'all having me. I love all y'all. But let me tell you something, every failure and every offense and every upset in your life comes from undue expectations on people instead of your expectation being on God. See, I don't expect anybody to come in here and save me. He's already saved me. I don't expect anybody to come in here and say, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know what I, I expect from him? Because he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never walk away from you. I tell you what, he also told me, you know what? The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. He also told me that, that he will give me all things that richly abound. He also told me, see, let me explain something to you. All this work we do to try to hear God, I said it last week and I'm going to say it this week. If it's written, you don't have to hear it. If it's written, it's a promise. See, if I go... I'm off my notes, so y'all just relax. If I go and I am a great heir of Zig Ziglar, who's one of the richest men in the country, and, and he passes away, and I'm mentioned in his will in black and white, and he's going to give us $10 million for the ministry, or to Alan Bailey just because I love him, or $10, it doesn't matter the amount. I don't have to be there to be named and for that money to be put to the side for me. It's in black and white. I don't have to hear the judge say, probate this out. You just got to know it's done. Then they contact me. and yeah, We've all been in these different situations. You, you go to, listen to me, you, you go on a job interview. Do you understand if you go on a job interview, before they call you and tell you you're hired, you're hired probably two days before in black and white. Didn't change the outcome. You just found out a few days later. So if it's in black and white, stop, stop beating yourself up because you don't know everything. But you do have to know some things. And you have to get to a place to where you know that God's dealing with your heart about something. Okay, so now God's dealing with you about something. Take that thing into the Word and say, God, talk to me about this. See, this is how I do it. I, I, I'm, I'm a person, I come in here when I'm, when, during the week, and I'll walk around praying the Holy Ghost and just, just talk to the Lord. And, and He'll start speaking to me about some things and... And, and I'll just make, make a few notes and jot them down. You know, I always keep a little pad up here, and I'll jot them down. And I'll just continue to pray until I feel a release. And then, then I'll go to, to my office and sit down, and, and I'll look at what I felt like he was talking to me about. And then I'll just start pulling up scriptures on that. And then that scripture will lead to this scripture, and this scripture will lead to that. And all of a sudden, there's my answer. But see, it takes that time, the quiet time, the peaceful time. Let me explain something to you. Y'all could spend hours on your face up here crying before the Lord and never hear because you're not peaceful. Because you just can't get quiet. I learned a long time ago that I'm not really praying until I'm past praying for myself. That's really, that's really not praying. That's, that's, that's Christmas list. Lord, I need this and I need that and I need this and, and I don't want you to kill them, Lord. Just make them feel real bad for what they did to me. You know, that kind of thing. You got to get past that. 
you got to get over into, and I don't pray that on nobody, I'm just saying. You have to get over, I have heard a preacher say, God called my wife her killer. And I've heard that, and that's ignorant. But anyway, we ain't going down that rabbit trail. But what you have to do is you have to get to where you're learning to pray his agenda. And what is his agenda? Lord, help me be peaceful. Help me be graceful. Help me see people like you see people. Help my eyes see the way your eyes see. Help me think about that person the way you think about that person. This is what has completely... Listen, I'm not, I'm not even lying to you when I'm telling you I have made such a revolutionary change in my life that even I hear some of the things I say and I'm like, that ain't me. Now, have I got it all together? No, because people can grate on my nerves like, like sandpaper. And I have to get it together just like everybody else. But for the most part, my wife will tell you that I've gotten to the place where I'll say, no, we're going to leave that in the Holy We're going to leave that to feed the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm the confrontational guy. I'm the guy that wants to just run up and deal with something. No, well, let's, just, let's just leave that there. Why? Because I'm peaceful. I'm not peaceful all the time, but inside, I know he's not mad at me. I know he's not angry with me. I know he's not. I, I, yeah, I can only speak for me. I can't speak for you. I can say this, and I can say this from a pure heart. I know he's not angry with me because I've never missed it on purpose. I've never missed God with a bad heart. Now, have I missed God? Yes. But I've missed God trying to do something. And he had to pull me on back and say, that's not, that's, that's not what I told you to do. And I said, God, I'm sorry. And then we're ready to go forward. So peace the gospel of peace. Now, I want you to understand, before we really get into this message and really get any further in what I'm trying to tell you here, I need you to understand, there is only two things that you have to see. Is that we, if you were going to be under the law, you have to be perfect, or you have to have a perfect Savior. Now, I want to say this to you. John 1 and 14. John 1 and 14 says this. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. What is grace? The power to overcome. What is truth? Judgment was on the cross. What is grace? The power to live however he wants you to live because he's put it in you. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient. To get through whatever you're going through. What is truth? Truth is understanding that his word not only is a good word. It's a binding word. It's a contract. And that he wrote it for you. And the word became flesh. Listen to me. Why did the word. Why is it necessary. That God would have to say. The word became flesh. To show you. That the last three words Jesus spoke. It is finished. Wasn't an erasing of the Old Testament, but a completion. Which means you don't have to be in fear of a flood. You don't have to be in fear of having to find Noah to get on the ark again. You don't have to be in fear of locusts. You don't have to go buy a ram and kill it every month to atone for your sins. Jesus came for you to give you everything he had. To let everything that was in him drain out into this earth. So that you can walk in everything he told you you could. And you have promises. You have gifts. You have callings. You have all these things. That you never get to. Without peace. Amen. Say that with me. Say peace. Matter of fact just close your eyes. Just close your eyes right where you are. And I want you to picture. Just close your eyes. I want you to picture all the, all the chaos, all the things that surround you, all the things that may be stopping you, all the things that your whole life has slowed you down, all these different reasons, whether it's family, whether it's issues, whether it's this, whether it's that, all the things. And I want you to understand that Jesus went to the cross so those things couldn't rule your life. So I want you to just stand to your feet with me right where you are. Just stand to your feet with me. Ladies, y'all sing real softly, okay? I want you to sing, but I want you to sing softly.